So we need to get that through our mind that, you know, nothing is the white man's knowledge. Knowledge is knowledge. It's not owned by anybody. And, you know, to blame people, you know, for your ignorance or be like, oh, I don't want the white man's knowledge. That's why I don't know math and science. It's just an excuse. Okay, so like I said, in my video about Age of Aquarius, consciousness is about being able to take responsibility for your actions more than anything. To be able to see that, you know, what the choices that you make, what, where they going to lead you. So knowledge, knowing things can only lead you in, the, in a good direction unless you know it's something that, you know, you shouldn't be knowing, like your sister, cousin, baby, daddy sleeping with so and so and so okay so that that type stuff that gets you in trouble so we don't need to know low vibrational things the knowledge is high vibrational so knowledge we do need and in the scriptures say and with all thy getting it say get knowledge get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding so you need to understand things too you need to understand the knowledge that's being given to you now i know i'm rambling a lot but we're going to talk about, you know, your eyes cannot pick up the curvature. And this is calculated based on math and science. And you yourself knowing that your eyes can't pick up stuff from far away. You know that your eyes can't pick up stuff that are that's far away. It's, it looks real far off. It looks real tiny, real small. You ever seen somebody be on the top of the hill or real high up and they say or oh, everybody underneath them look like ants because everybody appears small appears small so you can't see um the shape of the people's body they just look like small dots everywhere so if if you on a high mountain and you look down and the people look like ants what make you think you're going to stand on earth that's wider than we know and see the curvature of the earth. It just, I mean, we need to really use common sense. When people say, oh, the earth is flat and then they don't want to back it up with math and science because they say it's the white man's knowledge, you need to run from them people because nine times out of 10, they don't have an education and they want you to not have an education with them, okay? They want you to not have knowledge with them so they don't feel lonely and they stupidness, okay? And they stupidity. They don't, they don't want to be alone. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's deep. So we run from people like that, okay? I'm, I'm telling y'all the truth. Knowledge is good. Math and science is good. Numbers is alphanumeric. Alpha, alpha I mean, languages is alphanumeric. Numbers and languages can mean the same. Numbers and letters, I'm sorry, can mean the same thing. And they are a language. If we don't understand math, then we don't understand the language of the universe around us. Because it's made up of math. Just like, you know, the codes on a computer program. Because this is, um, everything is electronically designed. Just like a computer. So we need to understand that. <clears throat> that we need to know math and science. And because, you know, a lot of black people don't know math and science because they want to use the white man's. They want to always blame the white man and say, oh, we don't want the white man's knowledge. You know, because they do that, they can't understand things from a perspective of, of somebody who has this knowledge. It's going to always be a, a bicker and a back and forth. And, you know, you don't always think you're right because, you know, nobody can't tell you nothing until you do your own research, till you learn for yourself and say, oh, I was wrong the whole time. Until you do that, you gonna think you're right, okay? So it don't either don't matter how much how in depth I go. If anybody come on this video with the fact that flat Earth is real, no matter what you say, no matter what proof you bring, then that's that's their perception. Don't make it true. Don't make it true at all. So we're gonna talk about. So in this picture, it says. The checker shadow illusion, although square A appears, although square A appears a darker shade of gray than square B in the image, the two have exactly the same luminance. So why, um, why does 
B look more lighter than A? It's because the, the light is is farther away, so it's getting less light from whichever the way the light is coming from. Understand what I'm saying? So it's going to appear it's farther away from the light, so it's going to appear dimmer. You understand what I'm saying? So your eyes, everything you see is an illusion. It's not going to be perceived exactly as it is because your eye, everything, it's not like stuff just, and I didn't say this before in videos. I think I said it when I talked about how to stand to the spiritual world. It's not It's not like stuff just hit your eyes and you see from your eyes. You actually see from your mind. The images is calculated in your mind. And yes, I'm going to say calculated because you need to understand that you need math and science. The information is calculated in your brain and your brain perceives the image. It's not the eyes. So we need to understand through all of this that's going on, plus stuff being far away, and your, all the information happening to be sent to your mind for your mind to compute it. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to always be accurate. It's going to be, you know, what you can perceive, what you can see. Just like I said, when I drew the picture of the road that appeared to be going far away and everything began to be smaller, that's what my eyes perceived. Even though that's not really what was there, it was just a picture that was drew that way on a piece of paper to make you think, to make you think that that I was going somewhere, but it, I wasn't. It was just a road drew on a flat piece of paper, okay? That I made look three-dimensional, but it wasn't. So we know that the eyes can play illusions. So an optical illusion, also called a visual, visual illusion, illusion, is an illusion caused by the visual symptom and characterized by visual percept. That loosely said, appears to differ from reality illusions from reality. Illusions come in a wide variety. Their categorization is difficult because the underlying cause is often not clear. But a classification proposed by Richard Gregory is useful as an orientation. According to that, there are three main classes, physical, psychological, and cognitive illusions. And in each class, there are four kinds, ambiguities, distortions, paradoxes, and fictions. A classical example for a physical distortion would be the apparent bending of a stick have emerged in water. So, you know, the stick appears to be bending in the water, but it's not. It's just the water making it appear that way, and your eyes is picking that up, even though it's that's not really, the stick is not really bent, okay? <laughs> so we need to understand that. So just because you see, and the only thing you can see is flat, don't mean, only thing that you can see is straight across, don't mean that the earth is flat, okay? Because I ain't going to go there. We're going to keep that for hollow earth. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So uh, physical, psychological, and cognitive illusions. In each class, there are four kinds. Ambiguities, distortions, paradoxes, and fictions. A classical example for a physical distortion would be the apparent bending of a stick half emerged in water. An example for a psychological paradox is the motion after effect where despite movement position remains unchanged. An example for a psychological fiction is an after image. Three typical cognitive distortions are the Ponzo, Hockendorf, or Mueller-Lear illusion. Physical illusions are caused by the physical environment, e.g. by the optical properties of water. So, you know, we know that water can cause illusion to things. Light can cause illusion. If it's too much light and the light shining in your eyes, you can't see clearly. So too much light can cause illusion. We need to understand all of the things in our reality play a part on how we see it. But just because you that's the only thing you see, you need to use all your five senses, not just your eyes. What about what about your um yes you know all your other senses including your sixth sense not just what you see um you know that you can dig you know that you can take your hand and dig into the ground so you can feel that it's more underneath the surface of what you're walking on the surface of that we call the ground 
And another thing that people do is they, they mistake the ground for being all of Earth. Like in the flat Earth pictures that y'all that a lot of people show, they show the, the firmament and then they got the the ground and they like, okay, this is Earth. This is ground, the ground right here. This is how it look, it's flat, it's the ground. <laughs> The ground is not all of Earth, okay? Earth would be up and considered because everything underneath the firmament is a part of Earth. Then you wouldn't be actually on the surface until you're on top of the firmament. So unless you're on top of the firmament, you're underneath, which means Earth has depth to it and even more depth when you get to the ground because you can dig into the ground. As I explained to y'all, Earth is full. It was boy now it's full okay something cannot be boy or full if it's flat i can't fill up a flat piece of paper i can't fill up my table okay the water gonna fall off i can't fill up nothing that don't have no depth to it i can't fill it in i can't fill the earth is filled in with dirt so that means it has depth it's filled in with water so that means it has depth it's filled in with trees, so that means it has depth. It has to have an empty space for these things to exist. We need to understand that. So psychological illusions arise in the eye or the visual pathway, e.g. from the effects of excessive stimulation of a specific receptor. I'm going to move away from this window because I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. I'm trying to talk loud. It sounds like it's all around me, no matter where I go. <laughs> Is the window open back again? I thought I closed it. Okay, so. So I say, and perhaps those most widely known pathological visual illusions arise from pathological changes in the physical visual perception. Um, mechanisms causing the aforementioned types of illusion, they are discussed, e.g., under visual hallucinations. So we're not talking about hallucinations, even though that's the type of optical, um, you know, a visual. So I say a familiar phenomenon, an example for a physical visual illusion is when mountains appear to be much nearer in clear weather with low humidity than they are. This is because haze is a cue for depth perception for faraway objects, aerial perspective. The classical example of physical illusion is when a stick that is half immersed in water appears bent. This phenomenon has already been discussed by Palatomy and was often a prototypical example for an illusion. My husband keep opening the darn door. <laughs> I'm like, can they just cut it down for a second? Even when you're trying to do something. But when I'm ready to go outside, though, I'm going to want it up. That don't make no sense. <laughs> So it's a um, depth perception is the visual ability to perceive the world in three dimensions in the distance of an object. Depth sensation is the corresponding term for animals since although it is known that animals can sense the distance of an object because of their ability to move accurately or to respond consistently according to that distance. It is, known whether, it is not known whether they perceive it in the same subject way that humans do. Depth perception arises from a variety of depth cues. These are typically classified into binocular cues that are based on the receipt of sensory information in three dimensions from both eyes and my, my, my I'm sorry, <laughs> monocular cues that can be represented in just two dimensions and observed with just one eye. Binocular cues include stereo, stereo, uh, Stereo this stereopsis, eye convergent disparity in yielding depth from binocular vision through exploitation of parallax. Monocular cues include size. Distant objects subtend smaller visual angles than near objects brain size and motion parallax. Okay. So we're going to read all of these different type of visions. So monocular cues provide depth information when viewing a scene with one eye. Now, the reason why we're talking about depth, because we need to understand how the eye works 
because when you're talking about a curve, you're talking about a depth, you're talking about steepness, you're talking about being able to see something changing position from low to high from a long um, distance. So you, we're talking about seeing the depth of Earth. Okay, that's because that's what that's what it really boils down to. And you know, just me knowing that the Earth has depth mean that it's not flat based on the definition. If, like I said, if y'all, you know, want to use a different word, maybe y'all mixing up the word that y'all truly want to use, but it's not flat. Because I explained by definition, the earth is not flat. So I said, when an observer moves the apparent relative motion of several stationary objects against a backyard, I mean a background gives hints about the relative distance. As information about the direction and velocity of movement is known, motion parallax can provide absolute depth information. This effect can be seen clearly when driving in the car. Nearby things pass quickly while far off objects appear stationary. And that's another uh, thing of our optical illusion. You know, when things are far away, that's in motion, they look like they're still, but they're not. So it says, so we can already know based off all these examples I'm given that the eye cannot see the curvature. The eye can only pick up what it is perceiving. And sometimes it may not, you may see what it may not be, okay? It may not be what it appeared to be, okay? Just like we talked about the picture that I drew, this car example, stuff being far away at a high range looking down stuff being smaller you know all of these things so we need to understand that you would <laughs> you would never be able to see the curvature even if you up in the plane all of these excuses it will never you will never be able to see the curvature does it mean it does not exist no because we know based on math and science and everything that i'm saying to y'all that the earth has it has depth which means that somewhere it has to start going down which means that somewhere it has curve if i dig a hole in the ground I, if i just dig a, a um hole in the ground i hollow it out right then what earth is now a curve there right so we we know somewhere the curvature is there just because you can't see it with your two physical eyes don't make it not real your eyes cannot perceive the curvature of the earth based on the distance and the way that your eyes work it won't be able to perceive it and people would know this if they knew math and science this effect can be seen clearly when driving okay we already read that some animals that lack binocular vision due to their eyes having little common field of view employ motion parallax more explicitly than humans for depth cueing. Some types of birds which bob their heads to achieve motion parallax and squirrels which move in lines off orthogonal to an object of interest to do the same. Depth from motion. When an object moves toward the observer, the retinal projection of an object expands over a period of time, which leads to the perception of movement in a line toward the observer. Another name for this phenomenon is depth from optical expansion. The, the, dynamic stimulus can, the dynamic stimulus change enables the observer not only to see the object as moving, but to perceive the distance of the moving object. Thus, in this context, the changing size serves as a distance cue. A related phenomenon is the visual system's capacity to calculate time to contact of an approaching object from the rate of an optical expansion. A useful ability in contacts ranging from driving a car to playing a ball game. However, calculations of TTC is strictly speaking perception of velocity rather than depth. If a stationary rigged figure, for example, a wire cube is placed in front of a point, and this is kinetic depth effect, is placed in front of a point source of light so that its shadow falls on the translucent screen. This is, we're talking about light, water, light, all of these um, uh, natural aspects do affect, affect with how you see. 
in how you observe. So let's say if it's uh, okay. So let's say the shadow uh, is placed in front of a source of light that its shadow falls on a translucent screen. An observer on the other side of the screen will see two dimensional patterns of line. But if the cube rotates, the visual system will extract the necessary information for perception of the third dimension from the movements of the lines, and a cube is seen. So you see how your eyes just made that happen. I mean, the process of the vision made to happen. So I say this is an example of the kinetic depth effect. The effect also occurs when the rotating object is solid rather than an outline figure, provided that the projected shadow consists of lines which have definite corners or endpoints, and that these lines change in both length and orientation during the rotation perspective. The property of parallel lines converging in the distance at infinity allows us to reconstruct the relative distance of two parts of an object or of a landscape features. An example would be standing on a straight road, looking down the road and noticing the road narrows as it goes off in the distance. And that's what I was telling y'all about the picture that I used to draw. I would start it big and end it small so that it appeared that it was off into the distance, but it really wasn't. Relative size, if two objects are known to be the same size, but their absolute size is unknown, relative size cues can provide information about the relative depth of the two objects. If one substands a larger visual angle on the retina than the other, than the other, the object which substands the larger visual angle appears closer. Familiar size, since the visual angle of an object projected onto the retina decreases with distance, this information, hold up, back it up. Since the visual angle of an object projected onto the retina decreases with distance, the angle decreases with distance. You will not be able to see the angle of the earth from a distance, and you will never be able to get up on it because it's never, <laughs> you will never be able to get up on it. Okay, so it's saying, since the visual angle of an object projected onto the retina decreases with distance, this information can be combined with previous knowledge of the object's size to determine the absolute depth of the object. For example, people are generally familiar with the size of an average automobile. This prior knowledge can be combined with information about the angle it subtends, it subtends on the retina to determine the absolute depth of an automobile in the scene. Absolute size. Even in the actual size of the object is an unknown, and there is only one object visible. A smaller object seems further away than a large object that is presented at the same location. Aerial perspective. Due to light scattering by the atmosphere, objects that are a great distance away have lower luminance, contrast, and lower color saturation. Due to this, images seem hazy the farther they are away from a person's point of view. In computer graphics, this is often called distance fog. The foreground was high contrast. The background has low contrast. Objects differing only in their contrast with the background appear to be at different depths. The color of distance objects are also shifted toward the blue end of the spectrum. E.g. distant mountains, some painters, notably Cezanne, employ warm pigments, red, yellow, and orange, to bring features forward towards the viewer and cool ones, blue, violet, and blue, green, to indicate the part of a form that curves away from the picture, the, that curves away from the picture plane, okay? Accommodation. Now, we don't even need to read all of these because I don't want to spend all the time reading all of these Y'all can read up on this stuff yourself. You need to know math and science to be able to, uh, you, you need this knowledge. It's not the white man's knowledge. You need this knowledge. So now we've established that you cannot see and don't, don't come to comments like, oh, that's the white man's knowledge or that's the Google. Because every, every piece of information that we have today, every book, Every, everything is uploaded onto the internet. It's just a faster way to get to it than going to the library and checking out the book. Don't make no difference. So don't say, oh, that's Google. We don't believe in Google. Would you believe in Google when you're using it for what you want, though? You know, hypocrites. That don't make no sense. You can't be no hypocrite. So 
we established that your eyes cannot see the curvature of the earth because of the distance that you'll always be as it's ever curving, okay? Forever curving. You know, it's like if it's forever curved, if it's forever circling, and just because I'm saying circling, because you can circle something that's not a globe. Like I said, I don't believe it's a globe, and I'll let y'all know what I think it is at the end of this video. But, um, so, it's a... Oh, we done with this. So, the next thing we want to talk about, I said I would talk about the scriptures, because people always say that the Bible says, oh, that the earth is flat. Okay, the scriptures say, I just explained to you guys that it said the earth was formed and void. It was void of form. It was void. It was empty. So that means earth was already here. It was just empty. It said earth was void. Okay. And we can just pull it up so don't nobody say I'm adding stuff. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the earth was without form and void. So that means nothing was made on the earth yet. Like, it didn't have trees and everything, but the earth was here. It was just void. It was empty, and he filled it up. You can't fill up something that's flat. Okay, you cannot fill up something that's flat. So let's not use the Bible for that. Then they try to use this. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now what in, what I'm going to ask y'all, where in there did it say the earth was flat? It said he put a firmament over the earth. It didn't say the earth was flat. How, whatever shape it is, it's a firmament over it, okay? And the firmament is actually part of the earth. This is what I'm explaining to y'all because the reason why people is confused because they only looking at the ground as part of the earth. What about when you're standing on a high mountain? You're not on earth no more? That's not earth? The ground is not earth. What about if you climb a tree and you were sitting at the top of the tree? You're not on earth no more? <laughs> you on earth. Earth is not just the ground. Earth is everything here, okay? Earth is everything here, and that's where the confusion comes in. Like I said, you're not outside of Earth until you're on top of the firmament. When you're on top of the firmament, when you're not underneath it, like it say, he divided the waters which were under the firmament. If you not, um, if you not above it, you underneath it. You in it, okay? You're in it. You're in it. You're in Earth. Okay, you're in earth. It's no other scriptures. All the scriptures, it say circle, but we're going to talk about um, why it say circle and all of that. Many scriptures say circle. And so people draw a flat circle and say, this is what it looked like. That's not true at all. That's not true. That is not true. Okay. So, as, was, I, as I'm explaining to you, earth is everything here until you're outside of the firmament. When you stand on top of the firmament, you're not on earth no more. You're not in earth. I'm not going to say on earth because we're not on anything. We're in it. Okay? Earth is hollow and you're in it. It's filled up with all type of things. Grass, trees, water, us, people, animals. It's filled up. Earth is filled up okay it's filled up i hope you are really getting this it's filled up it is not flat it's filled up you can't fill up flat okay you can't fill up flat it just it don't work like that we're not gonna play on words and say oh no flatten this way flatten that way flat no flat is flat and it's not flat <laughs> You know, the excuses got to stop. We got to take responsibilities for the nonsense that's going on amongst our communities. 
and we really need to get some understanding on math and science and also our scriptures so people can stop using stuff out of context like and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so as the earth is flat okay that I mean that's just I don't that's ridiculous how did you conclude that from that I mean I, I'm sorry y'all I'm in college and when I went to take my placement test I scored out of reading because my comprehension is, is very high. It's always been high. When I was in the fifth, when I was in the um, ninth grade, I had a 12th grade um, reading average, and it's only continued to rise. My and reading is not about knowing how to read the words. It's about comprehending what you read. That's why they ask you questions on what you read to make sure that you're comprehending that you understand and a lot of our people are lacking the comprehension skills so they say and god made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so see it was flat <laughs> okay <laughs> like they be they be like this i'm like earth is not flat we earth has depth it is deep and I'm gonna continue to say this to somebody understand I don't care if one person just understand this if just one I don't need a million of people to understand if I can have one ripple effect one person understand me then that one person will under that one person will go and tell one person and that one person to go and tell one person and that one person to go and tell one person those five people gonna tell five people and those 10 people going to tell 10 people and those 10 people going to tell 20 people and you know so on and so forth so you only need it's, it only take one action to make a change okay one action to make a change and this is why i'm doing this video because i think it's ridiculous i don't even understand where the logic for flat earth comes from i really don't there's no you there's no science no math you can't see it Y'all don't like the Google picture or the Google pictures. They all fake, so y'all draw your own that you never seen. You just draw it, so you don't got no math, no science. You ain't never seen it, and you just gonna say the Earth flat with no evidence. With no evidence, okay. When when I'm gonna say this, I said this in my other in another video. When the police take you to jail and they wanna they wanna take you to court. They got to have evidence against you. When they, when, um, when scientists want to prove a theory, they got to have, they, they, they do experiments and they gather their evidence. They gather what they came up with. So most things are theories, but if you can prove it, it's now a fact, okay? So some things are theories, but if you can prove it, if you can prove it, it's now a fact. We can't prove flat earth. We can't prove that earth has depth because we can go outside and dig into it. We can prove that earth has depth because don't nobody know how deep the ocean is. They say they don't know how deep it is. It's just it's deep. So earth has depth. And I mean, I, we can go deeper and deeper into these scriptures. We can read a thousand scriptures. And ain't none of them gonna never say that the earth is flat. I want to get out here to this block party, so I guess I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm trying to think if I miss anything. The Bible does not say the earth is flat. It never says that. It's no such thing as the white man's knowledge. Okay? Knowledge is knowledge. You need it. Get it. Understand it. Okay? <laughs> get it, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Um, you you cannot perceive the curvature of Earth, so please stop saying, oh, but we can't see it, so it's not real. Okay, we can't see a lot of stuff. You can't see your heart rate. You can't see your brain. You can't see a lot of stuff. But do that mean it don't exist? No. No. You know how roller coasters, have you ever seen those point of view? Let's just see if we can pull one up before I go. And this is a perfect example. Have y'all ever seen those point of view videos from the roller coaster? Hold on, y'all. Let's turn that down. And 
I hope we can find a good oh yes now these roller coasters they go up and down but when you're going straight on one of these roller coasters do you see the curvature going down let's see I paused the wrong one. When you're going straight, now we see that they're going straight. And when you're going straight, do you see the curvature? No, you don't see the curvature on that roller coaster until you what? You drop down, okay? You're not going to see the curvature. This is perfect proof right here. I hope this is a good video. Okay, now let's back it up a little bit. And that's not even a, oop, I didn't mean to back it up. I didn't mean to back it up that far. But that's not even a big hill. But do you see what I'm saying? When they were at the very tip, before it started going down, did you see down? Did you see down? No. You only seen it once they started going down, okay? I'm going to try to stop you at a good, a good part. Boom. It look just like straight ahead. I mean, we see the tracks. We know what's going down because we see the things. But don't pay attention to the tracks. Don't pay attention to the railings that's bending down. We can see all that. Just look straight ahead. Do you see down? No. It wouldn't appear that that's about to bend if you didn't have the indication from the rails and the um, tracks and everything. It would look just straight ahead because our eyes is not picking up that curvature until it starts C2 went over the hump. When I go get my brother, um, when I go pick my brother up from his girlfriend's house when he babysit for me sometimes, he it's like you come to this little, um, it's not even a hill. It's like you're going straight. And the first time I went to pick him up, I thought I was going to crash. Scared the crap out of me. You're going straight. And I usually be picking him up when it's late, dark. Um, picking them up before I go to bed and stuff. So it's usually between 10 and 11. It'd be late. Um, so it'd be dark. And like, it's it's not a hill, so you don't go up. So you don't know you're about to go down. You're just going straight, and all of a sudden, you just go down. And the first time, I was going fast, because on the street, you can do 50 miles per hour. So I was doing 50 miles per hour, not knowing this little hump was right there, because it's dark mind you and it does it don't appear that the street is going down it appear that you keep going straight until you actually get over that hump okay so you actually get over that hump and this is what i'm explaining i hope this is making sense to y'all that your eyes can't pick up the curvature let's see if we can find another good example on this point of view roller coaster. now dang we need to back it up a little bit Now, they about to drop. Do it look if you didn't have like I'm saying, don't look at the rails and everything. Just look straight. It wouldn't appear that they're about to drop unless you we know it cuz it's a roller coaster of course. But clear your mind, renew your mind. Act like you don't know they about to drop and just look at what you see. Not a curve. It just looked like they about to, I mean, they about to go around a bend. But I, when I'm talking about a curve, I'm talking about steepness. They, it don't look like they about to go down. It look like they about to go around, but not down. But that's exactly what they about to do. See, it went straight and down. Up. You don't see over the hump until you get there. And that's... You don't see over the hump until you get there. Only thing with Earth is that you you won't never get to the hump because Earth is too big. I mean, you have to go on a real Earth journey and just say, I'm about to find the curvature and just be out there selling for forever. And, and you still wouldn't know that you're curving, okay? Because you won't be able to perceive it. It's happening too um, rapidly. It's not like a... a um, 
it's not like a steep drop. It's a gradual turn. You won't be able to detect it. It's a It's a gradual. It's a gradual curve, so you won't be able to perceive it. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you guys. Um, yeah. So, point of view roller coaster ride. I hope y'all can see what I'm trying to point out to y'all. When they at the very tip before they drop, and look, you can just see straight. Unless you look down, you won't know that you're about to drop. You would just see straightness, and that's what we see when we look off into the distance of the horizon and it's and people say because it's called the horizon that means it's flat that's that's not how rise nothing can rise and set and unless it's depth you see what i'm saying unless it can go up and down depth some people say the sun don't rise and set that's not my argument so let's not start arguing about the sun don't rise and set it just keep going around whatever but as horizon, that's what they're um, indicating that the sun rises over this um, horizontal line. Just because they're saying there's a horizontal line that the sun rises over, we still need to understand that that sun rose past that line. So it came from the bottom, the deep. So that means it, it has somewhere to go up and down. It had space. So that means it's not flat. I hope we can. I hope we can understand this. Now I'm trying to talk to y'all with some common sense and some knowledge, not with no uh, bubble gum stuff. Oh, let's get this Mercator map because I'm because I'm uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep going on and on. This video ain't gonna never end. I'm trying to end it. <laughs> this is the last thing I'm gonna say because this is used a lot by flat Earth. And what this is is it's an illusion. Okay. It's an illusion. It's depicting us being inside of Earth, like I keep telling y'all. We are in hollow Earth. You are in hollow Earth. You are the people who live in hollow Earth. All the stories and stuff that they make up is about us. We are in hollow Earth. You are in the center of Earth. You are in it. You are in the middle of it. Okay? You're not on top of it and you're not at the bottom of it. You're in the middle of it. So therefore, if it has a middle, it's not flat. Now this Mercator map is depicting not flat earth. It's depicting um, Alice in the Wonderland looking through the looking glass. What you see is the states around here. And when you look down, what you're looking down at is the South Pole. That is Antarctica. I've explained this in my Mercator map video months and, months and months and months and months and months ago. When you pull up a regular map side by side of this, you see you got Asia, etc. All of these, um, let me get my pen out so y'all can see what I'm talking about. You got Asia here. All of these is the continents. This is the top of the continents. These are the top of the continents. This is Antarctica. So what you're looking at is a globe. This is a, still a globe Earth. It's not flat. It's still a globe Earth. And what you're doing is looking down through the center of it, down into Antarctica with all of the um, uh, uh, continents on the outside of the globe still. You're looking down into it you are inside of earth okay they the only thing that they lie to us about is when they depict the globe like i said i'm not agreeing with the globe i'm just saying when they depict it they depict us as being on the surface of earth on the top of earth on earth when we're really inside of earth and this is why this is um a better depiction but still not a good depiction because it still depicts the continents as being on the outside as being on the surface when really we're on the inside and this is what they was trying to depict looking through the hole down into Antarctica because this is Antarctica which is really the North Pole because I explained in a video months and months and months and months ago that all the maps are upside down the South Pole is really the North Pole and the North Pole is really the South Pole they turned your maps upside down before they gave them to you. 
Satan turns everything upside down. This is what he does. He turns everything upside down. So the Mercator map is not depicting flat earth. It's still depicting a globe and the hole is cut out of the center, allowing you to be able to look through the looking glass down, down into uh, what I want you to see, which is Antarctica. Okay. So this is not a flat earth picture. Net and Gib. Nut and Gib. That's used to. You got to understand that uh, uh, New is the top and Gib is the bottom. And where are the people and everything in, in the center of it all? They in the middle, right? Everything is depicting you being in the middle of Earth, in the middle of it. The ground is not earth. This is not the surface of earth. This ground that you walk on when you go outside. That's not the surface of this not that's not the surface of earth. As I explained to you, the surface will be when you're standing on top of the farming man. Okay, now you at the surface. You are in the middle. Welcome to hollow earth and journey to the middle of the earth. Y'all wanna know what? Y'all y'all don't believe me? Let's ask the spirit. Let's ask my higher self. Are we in hollow earth? I'm going to stand up so I can have more balance. So back and forth is yes and side to side is no. The screen will keep going off. Now it's spinning again because you know I'm about to ask another question. Is Earth flat? Side to side. Earth is not flat. And if y'all, I'm going to try to hold it back more. Show me a yes. Show me a no. 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 Show me a